She's gonna be your new mother. <gasps> An officer. My husband was in that house. <laughs> Greetings, guests. Welcome to The Patriarchy, where we explore cinema classics fueled by predictive Hollywood programming and unpack how our favorite characters in cinema got egg all over their faces. I am your commentator, Dom, and tonight we're unpacking (laughs) Gold Diggers. The gold digger trope is a popular storyline that repeats itself over and over and over in film. While the plots of the overall films are somewhat different, her storyline is always exactly the same. The first change I make is to send that two-faced little brat off to boarding school in Timbuktu. I'm the woman of the house, and you're off to a year-round boarding school. Look at you, all cooped up in this house with a new baby. Camp Chippewa. How It's literally a plug and play young attractive woman, typically blonde, meets a super successfully loaded man, then bags loaded man quickly, always within a matter of weeks or months, then attempts to isolate said man if she senses anyone getting in her way. Then bam, gotcha. And I feel like we touched on the gold digger trope a little in the starter wife video. But the focus of that video was not the gold digger per se, but the women that are often left behind for her. So if you haven't seen that yet, you can watch it here. So today, let's do a little analyzation of the gold digger trope properly in film and how these women are portrayed as villainous and evil women, while very little accountability is ever held for the men who find themselves with these women to begin with. And why is that? It's because the woman is often written in these storylines to be the temptress, the femme fatale, the evil one, the mastermind, the manipulator, whose beauty just leads men to ruins. And to be fair, the whole beware the evil woman, O oh benevolent man, goes deeper than film, much deeper. These stories show up in many biblical teachings, Greek mythology, and stories of the past. For example, there's the story of Samson, the mythical hero and leader of the Hebrews who was ruined after he fell in love with Delilah. And oh, Delilah, that dangerous, seductress woman, cut his hair as he slept, stripping him of his powers and influence, forcing him to work as a slave for the rest of his days. And this trope from stories and film gets spun into real life with the narrative that Why are women manipulative? And it's why no man should get married. It's like these guys watch these movies, read these stories, and see these tropes and have begun projecting that this is the prototype of all women. While the man who is the subject to be gold dug is often portrayed as some innocent, goofy, unassuming, sweet guy. He's a victim of his own hormones and lack of good sense. Poor him. The messaging truly is, beware the evil woman, O oh benevolent man. But even the children in these movies and scenarios can peep this woman's game. Oh, nothing, nothing. You're just really very pretty. Yet her character and her true intentions somehow escape the grown adult men in these stories. So let's talk about a few of my favorite gold diggers as seen in fiction and my take on the men that they end up with. Be nice, daddy. He's everything you ever wanted for your little girl, plus millions more. The Parent Trap came out in 1998 and stars Dennis Quaid, Natasha Richardson, and Lindsay Lohan. And it's basically about two twin girls who were separated as children who end up meeting each other unbeknownst to their divorced parents at summer camp. So they switch places to each spend some time with the parent that they haven't been with for the past 11 years and develop this plot to get their parents back together. It's really a ridiculous thing to do thinking about this movie as an adult to not tell your child that they have a twin and to just live on two separate continents as single parents with no mention of this. I mean, the heads of these parents, quote unquote, parents need to be examined. But 
A foil in the girl's plans occur when twin Annie goes to California and finds that her biological father, whom she's never met, is now engaged to his 26-year-old publicist, Meredith Blake. So Meredith checks all the boxes that we've mentioned earlier. She's young, blonde, gets him quickly to commit, and then plans to isolate him when she sees an obstacle in Annie. But what about Nick? Why is he painted out to be the poor schlub who's about to get taken to the cleaners? He's obviously a very smart and successful man who owns and operates his own vineyard in Napa Valley, yet in the timeline of only a summer he proposes to Meredith, and he's no angel here, I mean like not telling his kid that she has a twin sister, and I don't remember if this was in the movie, but like where did Hallie think that her mom was this entire time? Also, once the ex-wife is back in the picture, Thanks to their girls, he's suddenly infatuated with her again, having long talks about their breakup, planning camping trips as a family together. Excuse me, what is she doing here? You see, that's part of the deal. The four of us, we go together. Didn't realize that you were going on this little outing. And to tell you the truth, I'm not so sure that I'm okay with it. All without his fiance. And running cold on Meredith altogether, that's not a very nice thing to do to your fiance. So this story concludes with Nick ending things with Meredith after she threatened to ship the girls off to boarding school in Switzerland once they got married. Like he wouldn't have any control over this decision anyway, but okay. But we all know the real reason and why he ended things with her. And it's because that he wanted to get back with his ex-wife, which he did. So it was Meredith who ended up getting the short end of the stick, in my opinion. I personally think Meredith's villainous behavior in this movie was more reactionary to Nick's kid's attitude towards her. And yes, she obviously was attracted to Nick for his money. But was there anything truly sinister about that? After all, why did he want to marry her after only eight weeks? He was just as allured by her youth and beauty as she was by his money. So equal exchange, in my opinion. I'm saying I want you dead and I want your money. But don't you love me? <laughs> Debbie Jelinski from The Adams Family Values also fits the prototypical mold of the gold digger trope. Young, blonde, gets him quickly to commit, and then plans to isolate once she sees an obstacle in the Addams Family. So I love the Addams Family movies, This and this is my favorite one. I love the camp scenes, and Debbie has some very awesome dialogue in this movie as well. All I ever wanted was a ballerina Barbie. And you know what they got me? Malibu Barbie. But Debbie is a professional gold digger. She's referred to as the Black Widow in the film and has Uncle Fester as her next target. And unlike in The Parent Trap, she does successfully marry and isolate Uncle Fester from his family, but never gets to the cash, at least for herself, because of all his, for lack of a better term, dumb luck. I don't think I can accurately criticize Uncle Fester like Nick because he's obviously a very mentally odd character, but his attraction to Debbie says a lot. Like Debbie puts on this feminine nice girl facade, but Fester is naturally, as in Adams, attracted to danger and pain. And I think that he sees this internally in Debbie right away and he likes it. So throughout the film, I don't think he was just dumb in love with her and just needed to be saved by his family. His family wanted to save him because they thought that he was drifting away from them. Esther, you have destroyed his spirit. You have taken him from us. All that I could forgive. But Debbie... What? Pastels? Get out! Which he admits that he was. He admits to being someone that he wasn't to appease Debbie. But again, I think Fester knew exactly who she was and in twisted Adam's fashion was attracted to her darkness. Sweetheart! We all know this after he let the children know that he missed her at times after their baby, Pubert, electrocuted her. So as also seen in real life, some men are very much attracted to crazy. Did Debbie have ill intentions for Uncle Fester and was she wrong for wanting him gone? Yes, but Uncle Fester knew what he was getting into. 
It was a game for him too, and she provided him with the deranged excitement of narrowly escaping death multiple times. Don't peek! It's a bomb! What? To wrap up, there are so many other movies that follow this formula and so many other gold diggers and the men that they quote unquote catch in films to examine. There's It Takes Two, Heartbreaker. No way, am I- <gasps> Oh my god! Oh, she's cracked her head open! Gentlemen prefer blondes. Enjoying your trip? Oh. How many times have you crossed? This is my, uh, Don't you feel alone out on a big ocean? Well, I, uh... I just adore conversation. Gilda. What are some of your favorite movies that feature the gold digger and the alleged unassuming benevolent man trope? Drop some titles down below and as always, if you've made it this far, please like, share, and subscribe for more. Signing off now, your friend, Dom.